Guess who's finally filming a book video? Hey everyone, it's Tatum. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my June monthly reading wrap up and then my priority July TBR. I'm sitting in my car because I think this is where I'm going to start doing my book videos and my room is a mess and I don't really feel like dealing with that. So I thought I'd film it in my car. It's kind of like cute. I've got my vines hanging up and everything. Let's go ahead and get started with everything that I read in June. I have everything on a piece of paper because I don't have the physical copies of some of them and I need to make sure it's in order from everything that I read. The very first thing that I read in June was the St. Michael's duet. I don't know what it is about this duet that I love so much, but these books were both easily five out of fives for me. I love Brayden and Ashley so much. I love their love story. I love the way that it wasn't just easy, but I, it was also it's like a Wattpad book and I just, I'm so in love with that kind of storyline because I have read Wattpad and I do like that kind of stuff. And this book just satisfied that needs. If I could reread any book that I read in June for the first time, this and another one are tied. Like, I love this duet. I do highly recommend. If you don't like the overprotective brother's best friend, trope I would not recommend but if you do read this it's so good I loved it so much it just it has a special place in my heart and will be always ranked so high for me it was the first thing that I read was the St. Michael's duet then I read two books in one day and those two books were this is where it ends in losing hope the second book in the hopeless duet or whatever this is where it ends the back makes it seem really interesting and it is pretty interesting the back says 10 a.m the principal of opportunity high school finishes her speech welcoming the entire student body to a new semester and encouraging them to excel and achieve 10 2 a.m the students get up and leave the auditorium for their next class 10 3 a.m the auditorium doors won't open 10 5 a.m someone starts shooting it's told from four different perspectives over a span of 54 harrowing minutes. Tara reigns as one student's calculated revenge turns into the ultimate game of survival. I rated this a three and a half out of five just because TikTok hyped it up a lot and I felt like it was good, I, but there were parts, like it could have been longer. There were parts that I felt like could have been capitalized more and they weren't. But I overall did really like this read and I would suggest it if you kind of like that thriller aspect to read. I do recommend very much so. Then, if you know me, you know how much I love Hopeless and this was exactly what I needed to read. I just love reading books that I ultimately love. And that was this one for me. I love Hopeless and I love the storyline and getting to see it from Holder's perspective was incredible. I can't really talk much about it without spoiling the entirety of Hopeless because that book is so good. If you read one Colleen, there are two Colleen Hoover books that I suggest you read. One is Hopeless and the other one I'm gonna talk about in this video. I love this duo. I rated this a 4.75 out of 5 because I was like, mm, you're not going to rate both of them 5 out of 5. Read it, read it, read it, read it! Then I got into the Devil's Night series. I love this series so much. I love this series. I only have one of the books with me because my sister is reading the rest of them. So the first one out of the series is Corrupt and this is the one that's like huge. Everybody reads this book. Everybody loves this book and I rated it a 5 out of 5 just because it is so good. It deserves every bit of the hype. I don't even know how to describe it. Rika is amazing. She's my favorite female character out of all the ones that I've read. Michael is so good. He's that overprotective brother's best friend. Bull overprotective boyfriend's brother. He's just insanely, insanely, insanely protective of Rika and always has been, always will be. It goes back and forth from three years ago to the present. But so good, so good. Couldn't recommend more, couldn't, couldn't recommend more. I do really love Corrupt. In between Corrupt and Hideaway, I did read all this time because my sister was raving about it and she really wanted to talk about it. I rated this a solid four out of five. It made me angry. 
I I do recommend this book though. I do recommend this book. It is a very much a what the hell just happened kind of read and I do recommend it. But that doesn't mean it wasn't frustrating because it was frustrating. I did like it. Um, this author is really good. I like the way she writes because I did read Five Feet Apart and that book is good. I do recommend. Then I read Hideaway and Kill Switch, both five out of fives. Hideaway is the most underrated book in that entire series. Because everybody loves Corrupt, everyone loves Kill Switch because Kill Switch is Damon. Kill Switch is like the bad boy, all of this, like, uh. But Hideaway, Kai is my favorite boy. Oh my. Five out of fives. Both of them are five out of fives. I don't have the physical copies with me. I'll put the pictures right here, but read them. I could not recommend more. The next book that I read is All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. Colleen Hoover is my favorite author, if you can tell, but this book was also very frustrating. I gave it a 4.5 out of five because I love Graham so much, but if Graham wasn't like one of my favorite book boyfriends that Colleen has ever written, it'd be a solid four. It's extremely sad, frustrating, just completely head palming. You get so angry during the read. I literally read a part, threw my book down, got up and screamed. I've never rated a Colleen Hoover book lower than 4.5 4 out of 5, if that says anything about her writing. But this one was great, but it just doesn't compare to my like top ones. That's why I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Then the next book I read was Together We Caught Fire. I don't see anyone talking about this book. I see more people talking about Serenading Heartbreak and first of all, get some help. Second of all, why don't more people talk about this book? It is a love triangle done great. It is the done better than Serenading Heartbreak because in Serenading Heartbreak, one of the boys gets broken so bad but keeps going back and I don't understand why. But this book, it was like a slow burn between them and then all of a sudden one happened but then the other one was like festering. It was so good. Um, I do like it a lot. I rated it a 4.25 out of 5 just because the main character and it did kind of make me mad at some points and I was like, mm, what are you doing? And I want to find a love triangle book where the main character doesn't make me want to rip my hair out. And I did really like this read. Connor, this the boy in there, one of my favorites. Oh, I love him. But I also love Grayson. Like he was great too and I do really like him. But then I read Together with Cut Fire. I'm so excited to talk about this book, but I can't even talk about it that much because I don't even know what to say. The next book that I read was a five out of five, easily. It's one of my favorite reads I've ever read. One of the best books I've ever read. That's Verity by Colleen Hoover. Ah, this book, it is so good. A thriller done amazing. Colleen Hoover just, she can write romance and she can write a thriller. I. Okay, since I'm being so dramatic while I'm talking about this book, I just want to talk about how the entirety of it was done because you really had one opinion for the whole thing and then the end happens and you're like, well, I don't even know what to say anymore because it's just her writing. She does it so well and I am just fangirling over this book the entire time and I just didn't explain one of the best parts of the whole thing. This book was done so well. I love it so much. I can't say enough good things about it. Everyone that watches, if there's one book from this entire video to read, it's Verity. Read Verity, read Verity, read Verity, read Verity, read it. Like top three of my favorite books of all time. So insanely good. It's so well done. I love this book so much read Verity. I was just on a very, very, very great reading kick, like five out of fives. And I read Song of Achilles. I talked about it in one of my vlogs that I was reading it and I already knew what happened. I tabbed this book because I knew I was just going to love it. This book deserves a hype. Um, I knew exactly what happened at the end of it and I was still able to get through the whole book and love every bit of it and still rated a five out of five. The writing in this book is amazing. The love story is done so well. I cannot even, like, book talk 
hype this book up and it deserves every bit of the hype. It deserves every bit of it and more. I love Achilles until the end, but I love Patroclus throughout the whole book. It wasn't like a frustrating where it made my rating go down. It was a frustrating where it was like, oh, why is this happening? But it all makes sense to the storyline. If you haven't read Song of Achilles yet, buy it and read it because it is very, very, very good. Then I started reading a Wattpad book it's called Lila. I finished it yet um, because I kind of wanted to start reading like paper copies because I have so many books to read. But I did really like it so far. I've seen it a lot on TikTok and I was like, mm, I'll give it a try. It's good. I like it. I have not finished it yet and I will probably finish it at some point at like work when I get bored. But yes. And then the last book that I read in June, I actually finished last night. And that is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I'm not even going to lie about it. It's good. Was I a little underwhelmed by it? Yes. I hype up certain books so much in my head. And then when I read them, I'm like, mm, this was disappointing. That was kind of like how I was about All Your Perfects. I hyped it up so high. And then when I read it, I was like, that's it. And so that's why it has a 4.5 out of 5 instead of like a 5 out of 5 best book I've ever read. Because I hyped it up. This one gets a 4.25 out of 5 because I hyped it up so much in my head and then I was like kind of disappointed when I finished it. I do really really like Jonah. Jonah, great. One of the best ones that I have read. I love him so much. Kala on the other hand pissed me off until about the end. She's just like the entitled city girl that you hate on TV shows and that's how she was in this book and it made me very insanely sad because I was so excited but it was a good book. I do recommend the read and I know there's more to this series, but I think I'm just gonna read it as a standalone and I like it. I do like it. Here is all the books that I read in June. I did start The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and I could not get into it, so I did not finish that book, but I'm gonna keep it because the cover is just so pretty. But that is it for today's video. If you want to know my rankings faster on the books that I am reading currently, follow me on my Goodreads or friend me on my Goodreads. I will definitely accept any friend requests on Goodreads. And you will get to see my like live updates and everything like that. I only review my must reads out of all of them. So if it's a must read, you'll get to read a review from me. But I do update them and like I write what I'm thinking and update. Also, all the rest of my social media will be linked down below. I'm trying to upload every Wednesday and Sunday. I didn't upload this past Sunday because I was in San Antonio. So I'm going to try to upload every Wednesday and Sunday. So anticipate those. Put my post notifications on. Like and subscribe if you like this video. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video.